Here's Carolyn Jarvis. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9. Human rights are something children normally don't have to worry about. But Tracy Wilson and Harriet Cunningham are special. Two 10-year-olds who were born as boys but identify as girls. While their parents accept who they are, others don't. And that has ignited a debate with both school boards and the B.C. government. As Jill Kropp explains, it's a matter of who gets to decide whether someone is a boy or a girl. You hungry too, Henry? Henry? Eat. Go on, you're hungry. I know you are. Ten-year-old Harriet Cunningham is most comfortable tending to her animals. This is Lillian, and she's good, but she needs a bit of a bath. Harriet was born Declan, but she has never wavered in who she is. I've always been a girl, even when I was a boy, when I was considered as a boy. In my dreams, I was never, I was never a boy. Tracy and Harriet are transgender. They were born boys, but knew early on they were meant to be girls. I just assumed that I was j just being myself and being unique, and I didn't know that it would all come up to this. The Wilsons and the Cunninghams now want the rest of Canada to see their daughters as they do. but it hasn't always been easy. It wasn't until preschool when the toy options expanded that he went, whoa, like, look, there's dolls and there's fairy dresses. And then his interest started to shift a little bit. When it was getting into the role playing and things like that with him wanting to dress up, I got nervous. As it progressed, Trey wanted to wear the dresses and uh, the fairy wings outside or we get a ring in the door and he'd run to the door in a dress. This is my closet. In Harriet Cunningham's family, this blue dress has become something of a symbol. This is pretty much my all-time favorite dress. It was the night of Harriet's grade two Christmas concert and her father, Colin, hadn't yet accepted that his son was really his daughter. About 10 minutes before we're ready to leave, she comes clopping down the stairs in uh, heels and Megan's uh, powder blue uh, bridesmaid's dress. I admit that I was thinking of my own embarrassment taking my child to his Christmas concert dressed as a, a girl. So I said, why are you wearing that? And you know, why now? She genuinely said, well, because it's a really beautiful dress. I especially like it because it goes swish, 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 swish whenever I walk. And I froze in place. Colin didn't take Harriet to the concert. I think that's not unusual for a lot of parents because they will always have that hope that, that our kids will turn out to be fit in the majority. Dr. Wallace Wong is a psychologist specializing in transgender children. He says while sex is known at birth, gender identity doesn't develop until three years old. Sometimes the two match and sometimes they don't often mistaken for homosexual behavior, it's actually called gender identity disorder. We are all weird in some way, and that makes us unique. None of us in, can fit 100% as a muscular male or feminine female. Dr. Wong knows that it can be hard for parents to accept, but there are serious repercussions if they don't. There's a lot of emotional pain. There's no way out. So the only way to, to, to numb their feelings, often they do a lot of self-harm uh, behavior. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not thinking like that. I'm, I'm, I, I know that my family fully supports me and that I, we can do anything and I, don't, I, don't, I won't let that stop, you know. It's, it's going to be hard and I, I, I know that and there's going to be some ignorant people, but nothing you can't get through. I've kind of always known I was one, but then I finally put my foot down when I thought about puberty. I, and it, and so then I, I, it was pretty sudden. I said, I finally clarified, no, 
I'm, I'm not. And, and, yeah, my mom and dad were a bit shocked and were a bit... No, I didn't. I, I, I was kind of miserable. People blame my parents? It's their fault about what? That you're transgender. How is it their fault? It's no one's fault. It's, it's kind of just, it, it's me and I don't really, they, they blame them? How come I've never heard of that? It's, it's not their fault, if, if anything. They're helping me. It's it's my decision. If 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 I if I if it, it's it's not at all their fault. It's they're they're the ones some of my biggest supporters, and they're the ones helping me get through this and be happy. I don't see who would who would have the guts to blame them because they, they don't they have they have nothing to be blamed on. People tell me I'm brave, but and people and dads like. Oh, you're too modest, but I, I don't know if I'm brave. I, I feel brave, but I don't know if that's how other people have, out of my family see me as. Harriet is confident, and she's happy with herself, and she wouldn't change anything. In grade two, I got invited to ten birthday parties. In grade three, I got invited to ten. In grade four, I got invited to one. Ten-year-old transgender girl Harriet had to learn to be tough. I got called a he, she. I got called quite, quite mean names, and it, I try not to let them show that I'm, that I'm sad, but it really hurts me. Harriet has a very strong personality. Kids would say, "What are you?" and she'd go, "I'm a person. That's what I am." But it was a conversation with her grandmother, Kathy Dickens, that finally convinced Harriet. My grandma told me, do you want to get a beard like Daddy? And I said, no. And you, like, at the thought of that, I, I put my foot down. No, I want to be uh, fully a girl. So that is what she did, wearing only girl clothing, legally changing her name, and presenting herself as entirely female. They have different ideas of gender. But that's not enough. Harriet also wants the government to accept her. When I have to show ID and I'm going through um, customs, I think it's called, yeah, customs, it makes me sad because people give me dirty looks and they kind of question me, who's this, blah, and it makes me feel like I shouldn't have to go through that. I'm, I'm a girl and I'm, I'm like everybody else. Grandmother and granddaughter have started a campaign to remove gender from birth certificates and passports. I will continue writing to government and advocating for change until we have things in place where she feels safe and protected wherever she goes. Why is it the people, those people's business to know what gender I am? It, I'm, I'm Harriet. Look at me. I'm, I'm like this. There we, there we go. It's kind of that simple. They even filed a human rights complaint against the B.C. government, saying that Harriet should never have been labeled male at birth. We used to think that you could tell gender. You looked at, you looked at the baby when they were born, and ah, now we know, boy or girl, for the rest of your life. Those are profound ideas in our culture, but they're mistaken. Lawyer Barbara Findlay took on their case. She says gender markers are outdated. When I first got my birth certificate, it had on it as identifying features, my name, my date of birth, and my gender. That was it. If I'd been born 20 or 30 years before, it would also have had my race and my father's occupation and my class. But we've already figured out that those aren't relevant. <laughs> it's very humbling. We adults have a job. And our job is to listen really, really carefully to what children have to say. While the grown-ups are left to decide who they can be, Harriet already has it figured out. I don't want to just be referred to on the street as a girl. I don't want to be just someone wearing a costume. I want to be me.